Okay, this first update in Affinity Designer 2.1 has to do with balanced dashed lines. And you just can come over, you can change the if it's solid or if it's dashed. And this would really only be useful when you are drawing your own things or you want to change things to dashed lines. And you can really manipulate those dashes how you want with each of these individual boxes. It's going to change. This one changes the length of those uh, dashes and you can also change the spacing between the dashes and just a lot of other ways that you can change how those dash lines look and they have balanced so you can toggle that on and it makes the corners look a lot better when it is balanced as you're you're changing those. It's a big design element, not going to be super useful for sewing, but just know it is there. Okay, this next one has to do with your move tool. And let's say I had some objects that I grouped together. I'm going to push shift and control G to group. So I've created a group of the circle and the rectangle. And if I only wanted to work with and select uh, each of the groups and you didn't want to select um, individual pieces that maybe were on top of it, you didn't want to select those, you could come into the move tool and now they have auto select one is, is selected. You could turn that off and then it won't select when you're clicking. So if you want to just click off your shape or you can click on auto select and you can select the shapes by clicking. Another thing you can do is it's come over here but if I click on my group you can go to instead of default you can click that it wants to click on objects or you can even click on groups. So if I didn't want to accidentally click on something that was not grouped in there then right now see it only selects the group that is behind that and I can't select the individual object that's on top. I only can select the group. So that's also a, another new feature. Okay, this next one is kind of a shortcut. If you wanted to duplicate an entire layer, so if I want to duplicate the small layer of this pattern, you could right click and push duplicate but now you can also click on it and on Windows, hold Alt on a Mac or iPad, the Option key, and hold it, click, and it's duplicating it, and it will drag it anywhere you want to put it. I'm just going to put it right underneath there, and it's appeared in there. Click on it, and you can say, whatever you can name your layer whatever you want. Um, but that's a quick way to duplicate if you're going to be making modifications, if you're going to make changes because you can select the entire layer and you can change the color of the lines and the thickness of the stroke if you want and that way you can see your duplicated layer and the original layer. I'm just going to collapse all these other layers so you can see my two. Right now you see the original small is in black on top and that's all you can see but if I turn it off you can see there's my duplicate and it's really thin lines so I'm going to actually increase the line thickness and it's doing it to the entire layer so it's a really quick shortcut if you want to do it to the entire layer of creating thicker lines or changing the line colors of the, uh, the entire pattern layer. Alright this next one I don't really foresee us using a ton in pattern alterations for sewing but you never know it might come in really handy. You can click on the layer and it will usually open the layer, but if you have anything that is nested under something in that layer, it doesn't open it when you click on that. If you want to open everything at once in one click, you can push Alt on Windows or Option on Mac and iPad and click, and then it's going to automatically open up everything that is nested under that layer. So if there's more things nested on that, that layer, it will open absolutely everything. And I put something nested under there. Most patterns don't have a lot of things nested under one another, under the layer, but it is an option there.
Okay, the next thing that has been upgraded is the guidelines, the blue, blue guidelines. And I use this a lot when I'm making pattern alterations. So I'm going to just click on the ruler and drag a blue guideline. And you can see um, it shows the x-axis where the location of this blue guideline is. And I'm going to stop it and I could stop it right at 3 inches. And it shows me it's right at 3 inches. Now what is great is if I drag another one and I'm going to put it right on the 3 inches line and then I want to take that line and let's say I'm opening up a pattern a half an inch and I want to measure you know, that distance a half an inch. I would usually eyeball another guideline but this one's going to actually show you the distance. If you look at the triangle at the bottom of that, it's going to show you the distance from its original position that it is moving in. So. Like right here, it what it's about 2.5. If I want to go a half an inch, I can go eyeball a three and a half. But you can see it's showing me whether it's right on or or not. And you can zoom in and try to get it as accurate as possible. There I am, right at a half inch. I know it was accurate. It was right at a half an inch. So those guidelines I know are exactly half an inch apart. So that's another way you can use um, ver vertical and horizontal lines. So that makes it really easy when you're doing quick measurements on the X and the Y axis when you're doing pattern alterations and you need to open up a pattern and make a, a measurement for how much you need to open up your pattern and it's either vertical or horizontal, you can use guidelines and now it really shows you how far you're moving it and how far from its original position that you moved it. You could see again the triangle underneath they're showing me how far I have moved it from its original position. Okay, a few other things with the guide is if you are dragging it and you hold shift, now it's going to go right to the ruler markings and it's going to jump right to them and it's not going to be in between. So if it goes right to the ruler markings, it might be a little bit easier to get it right where you need it. You can do that by holding shift. If you do shift and alt, it goes to what's called uh, the delta distance, which you can set in the settings. Um, another thing you can do if you're if you're done with a line, you can just hold Alt and click on it, and it deletes it. So hold Alt, click, and it deletes. So Alt, click, delete. All right, this next part that you can do with the guidelines is really cool as well. If you have a guideline out there, you can double click on it and it's going to show you all the horizontal and vertical guidelines that you have. Right now, I only have one open, but not only that, you can delete them from here if you want or you can add a new one. So if I, I don't want to drag that guideline for a specific measurement, you can just click on that line. We're going to add it and I wanted to add Let's say I wanted to add an inch and a half to that guideline that I already had. I'm just going to type it in and push enter and then you can push close and you can see my new guideline is on there at exactly four and a half. So I don't even have to drag it to measurement, measure it. Again, you just double click on the line and a dialog box is going to open. You can click add a new one right there. It's going to add a new one wherever you want it. If you wanted it at 4.75 inches and then push enter and close. You can see it's in there right at four and a half. So great way to have guidelines when you're making pattern, pattern adjustments. Okay, now there is also a shortcut for renaming layers. So if you are working on a pattern piece and they're always called curves and you're not sure what that is referring to, you could click on it and push Control or Option on a Mac, Shift R, and it will pull up to rename that layer. So you can name what it is that you're working on so you can quickly find it and you know what it is instead of it being called a curve. Now you know exactly what it is. So you can rename that piece on your layers panel. 